Hey guys, been a while. Today we're gonna do a walkthrough of my newest release, um, Sam Kit and Tecmo Dances with Wolves. Uh, it's a totally different type of track than what I've probably put out before. Um, and today we're just gonna cover every little decision that was made in the track um, as a final decision, really. You know, there's a lot of like stuff I obviously have deleted over the time that I've made this track. In it, it's an extremely complicated track. I wouldn't advise making tracks this like layered. Uh, if you haven't listened to it, I would definitely advise go listen to the track first in full. Don't skip anything. Um, just because uh, there's a lot of elements, a lot of like moving parts of the track, so you'll be able to like fully appreciate things going on. If you just skip through things, you won't really you need to be like oh, okay, whatever. Um, now. Yeah, so we'll be covering like the kicks, the percussion, the synths, the layering, uh, etc. And some advice going through this track. I've had to re-record this part because the camera was out of focus, but hopefully it's in focus this time. The I would advise not to make tracks this complicated if you want to like make something that's a bit more commercial and simpler. But like for me, this track touches something that like a lot of like other tracks won't it is like very complex but it's also extremely like um enjoyable to listen to and there's there's like so many moving parts it's like more of a symphony of like synths uh it's also so like that's the track it's doing quite well at the moment it got added to techno bunker which is huge um and like I've never been on that playlist before. It's massive. And like, you know, that is the playlist that I originally started listening to techno to. I don't really listen to it anymore because I don't really have the time to listen to a lot of techno anymore. And like, I've got my sound in techno, but it's a bit more like spread out with different ideas and stuff, which is great if you're like into techno and you want to listen to all the different types of techno. But um, yeah, it's awesome. If you go check it out on the techno, bunker, I'll put some links in the bio and stuff. But yeah, it's still there. It's awesome. So, yeah, there's a few things. Like, me and Tecmo have co-produced this track. There was, like, uh, this project's over, like, probably nine months before Tecmo added his, like, um, additions to the track and, like, suggestions. Uh, when in reality, like, I'd finished the track and I was sat on it for a, a long while. I couldn't find a label for it. There was some like stuff missing from the te track. Sent it to Tecmo, and uh, I think Birmio and a few others. And Tecmo would close off his like um, his sets in like Symbotica, I think, and a couple of clubs in Germany. And he, he was saying like, really loved the track, always goes off, but he wanted to add some things to the track to make it more like, um, even more euphoric and like um, thematic, cinematic. So I said, of course, mate, like, you know, I'd love to hear what you can add to the track. So he, he added in some things that really pulled everything together and made it like, took like a, a, a driving track into this like perfect closing track. And that, that's what we got here. And that, that's why promoting this track has been a bit of an issue. And like you, uh, you know, you spend some money submitting it to some playlists and a lot of like playlists are like, oh, that doesn't fit our sound and whatever like that. And it's like the issue with creating a track that's this unique, complicated and like there's nothing really I've come across that sounds like this track is that a lot of playlists who are like run by techno listeners with a super specific sound maybe are not going to like it because they're like, this doesn't like fit in, you know? But then it gets added to Techno Bunker, and you're like, look, mate, you don't have a fucking clue. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I'm only joking. Like, everyone's got their own style in it. and But at the end of the day, proof's in the pudding. It's been added to the biggest play techno playlist on um, on Spotify. And, like, that for me is good enough. Do you know what I mean? I love this track. I've been listening to this for over a year, and obviously you fellow producers will know when you finish a track, it may take like three months to finish it or whatever, or a month to finish a track, then you just listen to it all the time. And then like two months later, you're like, I am sick of this track. And by the time it actually comes out six months, nine months later, you're like, yeah, great. N not this track. I I've been listening to it. I've been listening to this track in its different versions for over a year now. And like, it still hits every time I go to the gym and I'm like running on the treadmill at like, uh, what is it? Like 
12 and then hits the moment and I'm like just slam that speed up and I'm just like absolutely going for it it is such a good track you know and I'm proud of it not in like a big headed way I just absolutely love it so like yeah so what we're going to be doing is covering all the little um everything really going through every layer individually and like this is showing you why I made certain choices and stuff like that obviously like this is going to be a um more like abstract look of things because I'm not showing you how I made it while I was making it this is kind of looking back on decisions that have been made and like maybe going through why I chose those decisions and why like certain things were done in a certain way um now the issue is is this project's over a year old like as in like when it started so there's a lot of decisions that I wouldn't make now um and I'll I'll say certain things like that and there's a lot of like when projects get really long they get really bloated either with like extra tracks or like extra effects and like EQ in decisions like the mix down for this was horrendous as in like the process to get it mixed down because uh, like over and over I'm like oh there's so many competing elements that I am really having to like try and make things fit and there's a lot of EQ in and a lot of redundant EQs, which I could have probably put on one EQ, but, you know, I digress. So, let's get into it. You listen to, like, artists. I'm not saying they're good. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm just saying Eli Brown, if you listen to his stuff, right? He's got a super specific sound right now on Arcane. And, like, he's done that. He's carved his own little path there. This, like, USA club techno, I call it, because it's quite, like quite commercial there's a lot of like female vocals in there it's not really something i would play a lot of his tunes of but production skills great clear songs he's got his own thing so what i was planning when i made this track so basically me and techno um co-produced this i had the majority of the track made out and it just needed an extra little push and i was sitting on it for months and months and months i'm talking like six maybe nine months before Tecmo added some final touches in it and kind of pulled it out of, um, like, just added a little bit more spice and, like, it's very difficult to try and find the space to add these, like, four or five elements back into the track because the track is incredibly busy. And I will say, as in this breakdown today, we're going to cover pretty much everything. Not in, like, a stupid amount of detail because, like, it would be hours long. There's so much in this track. Um, how many layers we got? Pretty... 88 layers um, and it's very confusing it was really difficult to mix down this track um, and it's not the best mix down because um, you know it's just there's so much going on but like yeah so I've not actually heard a track like this ever like you know there's so many moving parts of this and it's, it's really symph a symphony of track you can't really play this out as much as most other tracks it's not really compatible with a lot of like dj set but it is the perfect closing song like i've not heard a song that you could use in so many different sets to close on that is so euphoric yet driving yet like emotional i've been listening to this track now for over a year and like all your producers will know you make a track you finish a track by the time it gets released you're fucking sick of that track do you know what i mean in reality like I'm still listening to this track today and I still get fired up about it. I still, I'm in the gym, I'm listening to this and I'm just like absolutely hammering it. This is so good. And I'm not like, this is not bragging. This is just like, this is emotional music, you know? And that's what we should be making. Like I've had a lot of friends say to me, Kane, I'm looking at you. Uh, from the clips I put on YouTube and uh, Reddit, not Reddit, sorry, um, Instagram, people are saying like, oh, I, I didn't really think I'd like it. And then I listened to it and I was like, wow. You know, and it's because the track is in a journey in itself, which is, you know, a thing. Anyway, we'll get into it. So here's the Ableton project, as you can see. There's a lot going on here. It, it got so complicated in the end that I had to start, like, freezing and flattening things because there was just so much going on. My my PC couldn't pull it up, like, keep up with it. And my PC is not slow, guys. It is, like, 58th. It's, it's, it's a good PC, I won't get into the specs, I won't bore you with that. But um it's got a lot. The only thing that's weak on it is the graphics card, but I, you know, I don't really game, so not much anyway. 
So I wanted to get this like kick going where I'll put the headphones on. I wanted to get a like scrans feel to it, like a very like fast paced, lots of like percussion, a lot of like uh, just say there's such a there's a feeling to scrans music and like it's just like you know relentless and i wanted that feeling so this is the original kick we're just going to ignore this uh because in reality this is like if you watch my other tutorials it's pretty much the same thing i've kind of i've got a kick here off Re wave riders um which is a song by um i can't remember where it is now um filter heads i think but i've re-edited it put some extra top on there, changed a few things around on it, and then basically ended up with a um, kind of a low pass one with a bit more punch to it, a bit more of a smack. And this is the kick, so you can just listen to it here. So just got a kick going throughout. There's not really much to say about this, but I wanted that, like if you listen to the Filter Heads track, it's like a bum ba da bum ba da bum ba da bum I was like, that is amazing. And this was a while ago when I first heard the track. I was like, I, I'd love to make a track with a kick that's similar to that. And I didn't end up replacing it because it sounded so good. Um, but obviously I made the kick sound a bit different, so it doesn't sound exactly like it. Um, right, and in reality, the oops, sorry, the, the kick just, sorry, I just found out alt, alt left click closes everything. It's good to know. Right, the kick. Let's go through. I've got the main sample here, so we can just go in and have a look at it. And then what we got here, we're just going through a little EQ just to remove a bit of like <sighs> this track was so hard to to master, to mix down because there were so many things. So there's going to be a lot of like odd choices are going to be difficult to do, to explain. But basically, I'm removing this. I'm removing like 150. What is that? 190. Okay, around that area. Usually, there's like a bit of a an odd sounding thing around to in a lot of like kicks. So usually 150 to 120, so it's a bit more on that side, but if we listen to this. Yeah, so I was just making it a bit less like, a bit less punchy in a sense, a bit less like clicky there. So here's my just, um, my auto filter, which is kind of like what you use to, um, you know, when you remove the filter on the kick, so you just get it like that. So that's a bad example here. And what I've done here, I've basically added on an erosion inside there to try and like add a bit more texture into the kick as it's like failing down. So you get a here if I turn it off. Do you know what I mean? That's nice. Sounds great. Sounds a bit of you know. You just got to do a lot of these little things to try and like get our sound design game up to the to the max in it. So and then we got a little bit of a reverse kick there. So yeah, that's pretty much what's going on there. A bit of reverb on here just to fill in, but extremely short. Uh, no stereo. And then we clip clipping the uh, kick. Yeah, we're just actually we're saturating it a little bit right here just to get a bit louder and then in here we got a decapitator just to saturate a bit more so if you notice when i've added all the layers in it does slap you know so But you can't really hear, you can't really hear that one, is it? This one? You can you can barely hear this one in the mix because it's so busy, but it, it is there. If, you, if I get rid of the, um, here. Yeah, so, so looking back, what I would do is actually, I would probably, I would probably just do this to that. There's no need for that extra length if you can't hear it. But my mixing skills have gone a bit better since I made this track. Um, oh, it's really hot in my studio today. Um, 
yeah, my mixing skills will definitely help better since I made this track. So, you know, that's what happens when you, you're making tracks. You know, I made this over a year ago um, with the Tecmo edits on the last couple of months, six months ago, maybe. Um, so the, yeah, so the kick is basically you just got another layer where you're just adding in a bit of a, you know. And what I've done there, if you see on the right, you've got a minus one millisecond. Uh, so what I've done there, I've gone into Oculus Scope, most likely, played the, the the high kick, the low kick, sorry, and then just gone into here and adjusted the millisecond delay to try and figure out where the best alignment is for the sine waves within the uh, low end, you know? So if I remove this, not much of a difference, but I've obviously chosen that way for a reason, so we'll leave that. There's another click here, which is just a, just a bit of high end again, and this one's not in use, which is... Just again, more high end. I probably thought that was a bit too much. Right, that's the kick. One group done. Right, so we'll come back to this hyper blast, and you may be like, "What the fuck is hyper blast?" And I will tell you. Play Unreal Tournament 2004, and uh, you'll find out. It an amazing game with an amazing map and an amazing soundtrack and basically I've just sampled a bit of the soundtrack to try and get the um, drum fills in amazing game mid. sick right let's see hats simple nothing going on rear another hat just a bit of you know no, no, there's not much you know I'm doing with the hats really it's just standard shit another hat here it's more of a ride really yeah ride from the sounder spectre pack going in a bit of saturation and then we're going to go through an eq which is linear phase there right and then coming up to here um there's a lot of effect in here right so here's where the issues lie down with long projects with lots of layers and and like spending hours on it i've probably you know this this project i wouldn't even want to know how many how many hours are invested in this but if we um if we go into here there's lots of these little cuts that i've had to take out and again more cuts there and then like i'm adding uh, an ott on probably only slightly yeah and then like there's just a lot that's being done to try and fix some of the issues within the track which is really what you'd put down to bad arrangement or bad sound choice or poor um it's just too busy the track is just too busy you can fix things you can make things you know this is like forcing a few things together that kind of like i've done it well i think but like it should have been done a bit better but in the in the production stage you know so we'll get on to this group in a minute um, and then you've got the shakers here, which is, again, nothing too spectacular. That's not even in use, so ignore that. The ride is not in use either. Uh, this is basically just a clap, which, like, I love this little loop we've got here. If you listen to it, it just sounds so good. I wanted to add a, a clap and then not a clap, then a clap, so you get this, like, nice if you listen to the rhythm and the groove of this now it just sounds like there's two claps going on then because there's a clap in this sample so and, and like it just it just adds another bit of de depth again and then on this we got a it's just a snap in thing which is just basically i've got three percussion going over a bit of reverb delay uh oh really weird looking eq at the time, it was a good idea, uh, and a bit of amp, and you're just getting this like nice, like, which you can hear here. Can't hear they. I would delete that now, knowing I can't. You know what I mean? And then no. Uh, I, I love this song. Right, this is so sick. Right. Um, so in the shaker, this is basically the scrange part. Scrange. You know what I mean? It's like just really rhythmic, really like, you know. Sounds sick, mate. So we listen to the first loop. 
which is really the main the main loop you can hear it right and like this is just basically a normal loop and we've just put it through loads of distortion and a filter right so sorry there we go I put it through loads of distortion you can kind of hear it now if we just remove everything cool it's it's quite a you know like a quite a nice just housey type of thing you know i mean you could have a boom 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 boom, boom, boom type of thing going on there you know remove some of the lows don't need them we shift it down using a frequency shifter on frequency mode this works different than normally what you would get with um like if we go on pitch mode Hang on a minute. This right. Never mind. This is turned off. This is what I mean. Opening up these old projects. Right. Um. So this is pedal. So in fact, we've ignored this, but I did have it to this before. I think. Um. We go back to frequency. But I obviously decided against it in the end. So we go on to. But a fun fact with this before we go on. Pitch moves things in. Um, how do I explain this? That you've got your frequencies going across your um, EQ, base, not your EQ, but you know, you've got across the spectrum. And um, let's say something here is a 900 or 1000, and you add it on, um, and you've got like a harmonic series going up. If you press this and put it up one, it will knock everything up according to one semitone in relation to where each of the things are right which means that if you had a chord that was like of sine waves let's say they were like octaves apart they would both move equivalent one step up but that equivalent one step up means they would both move a different amount of hertz between them do you understand like if one if this one at a thousand gained like let's say 200 hertz the one at like 3000 would gain a different amount right there was equivalent now on frequency mode it's totally different it works way more simple <laughs> way more simple it works way simpler the frequency is basically if i minus 280 it will minus 280 from every single um frequency on there rather than like adjust them all so you get this cool sounding thing really good for to techno right, two secs right so that's really handy for techno stuff you just uh, put a dry wire but you get this like more crunchy sound really cool really good on like shots as well if you like really crush it you can't do that with like this type of stuff it'll kind of get a bit too muddy if we listen to it now oh it's not too bad you know i've minused 10,000 kilohertz off the entire signal there. And if I put it to frequency, if I like, just went this, it would sound awful. Well, I mean, that sounds cool in other ways, but you know what I mean? It, totally different sounding things. So we added a pedal on overdrive, just a little bit gain. You can see how like pedal like absolutely destroys shit, mate. Like it is so good for like crushing stuff. But, like, I felt like lost a bit too much of, like, uh, the presence from this, so added on this a bit. Kind of brightens it up a little bit more. And then... And on this underneath, we've just got a... Just to emphasise a bit, you know, the hats. And it, it's exactly the same... Um, thing it's probably a duplicated layer to be honest and then we go in here and we get and then on the top top layer we have got this shaker down so listen to this that's what it should sound like 
and then not again I, I would probably distort that even more now knowing or maybe not maybe over here it's a bit okay um and then if we listen to this loop it's probably the same thing yeah just just a bit of groove do you know what i mean and then crush it to sh crush it up and then just slam a bit of like stuff like this on it and then you can get this really like energetic but like energetic but not so energetic in the highs that when you add hats on top you can hear the hats so and you know add in the drums again and Sounds cool. Right, so on here we've got some notches out here because because of certain synths that arrive later on. I could have used dynamic EQing, but I thought if you know if I knock it out, you won't be able to tell there's dynamic EQing because you be you may be able to be like, oh, they, these hats just sound a bit worse within that area, you know. And there's certain parts of this song that are a bit bit crushed at sometimes but um because it is like this so much energy going on right as you can see here i've just added a bit of automation on this and this is how i got that effect of this like you're hearing now very subtle but i'm basically like creating a It's just a tiny bit of like you can kind of just hear things that are like oh just going down a little bit only a tiny bit especially towards the end of it and then it's the same thing here but a bit more subtle and i got again here that should have probably been like that to be honest right um and that's just a little, little nice little effect. Probably unneeded on the track, but we just added a bit more extra complexity. So here I've got the um, Molotov, really good plugin, free as well. There's a pro version, which is better, but like only if you really understand um, compressors and how to get the most out of them, you know? So here I've just got a bit of an attack here just to let through the um, some of the transients and then a ratio, you know, three... Was a four basically to one, and then um, you know you can hear it here. So it's just it's just about getting a bit more of a snappier transient response, um, and then it goes through an OTT, which probably removes some of that snappy transient response. Silly Sam, um, and then delay, which is just used for certain sections like here. Which you know, this is this is in the breakdown, which is kind of like you know, you're just trying to create a white noise mess, really. I should probably should have added a bit more reverb in there. Is there reverb coming on at this time? Yeah, so it's just creating like a washout, and then going into newfangled, amazing plugin, which is just adding in a lot of punch. You know, see, see how like swooshy like, is that right? It's like shish, shish, shish. but add this, and it's like. Then we've got a uh, standard clip, as you all know, I love this plugin. Bam, bam, knocking off them transients again, but still making them sound sharp, you know? And then we've got a delay, which is doing nothing until this section here. So, you know, probably should have just used that delay over there, you know? Like I said, old projects, bad habits. Um, and then we just got ProQ3 doing, you know, linear phase again, and then just cutting out the lows. That's just linear phase for a reason, as you guys know. And I did learn a new new trick, which I should be implementing, which is not on here, because this, this track was so complicated that I couldn't have a mastering bus on here. I needed to master it properly somewhere else in a different project, because it was just too many layers, mate. Right, so we've got the percussion. So this is Hyperblast, which is just stems from another track, uh, which I got off Patreon. And uh, if you listen to here, it's just the breakbeat, basically. And what I've done here to create this little, like, well, I, oh, I don't know how to describe it, really. Let's just, if I grab that and, like, 
and reverse it. I can't remember if it is reversed in it, yeah. Just a nice little like build up, isn't it? Adding in, and this is just just another like I think it's uh, in reverse of like the, some of the kicks and drums from the breakbeat section. Yeah, it is. And if you notice, I've just like eq this out a little bit just to make it feel a bit better and then just add it in like a bit of automation to try and like um fill it in a bit more and here we've got something similar and then we've got the same here just say so you know it's just like taking out a breakbeat section off a track and then just mixing it up so i've like i've chopped and changed just a bit so what we've got here this is the breakbeat loop But really, I, the main the main star is this. I like, I love this. We've got a massive sub coming in when it eventually arrives. Comes in very slow because you've got everything going on during this breakdown. You've got like a. But obviously this is in conjunction with the Reese bass, which we're going to cover in a minute. Which I should have probably started to cut out a bit more of the highs. But when you get to this section... So the trick is here is if you listen to this um, Reese, which is not, sorry, this sub, which is kind of like there's two subs going on at a certain point. You can see there's like an overlap in this section. Super powerful moment to listen to. Right. So this is a square wave because squares are the loudest, right? So obviously we, we've been EQing, so it's not a true square, but pay attention to the notes in here. So it landed on the high C, so C1, C sharp 1, A flat, sharp 0, and then we're landing back down to F. So nice and powerful. Some systems can play lower than that C, right? That C1, which a lot of systems can't. My system, I can feel it in the room, and by God, like the day that I can hear this on a system. Right, if we listen to this, it is literally just the lower C, the D, which is the same thing actually, uh, sorry, got confused there. That is the same note basically, it's just representing as D flat on here rather than like on here. So what we have here is, sorry, you probably can't hear that on this because I'm not sure, but if you notice that is C0, which is a 34 hertz, which is less, Lower, which is, you know, this one's at, sorry, 69. But basically what I've done, I've laid them on top. So instead of just having that, like, the power of that one, you really, like, push that note. And it sounds so strong. Even on, like, smaller speakers, it sounds like something's coming through. If we listen, just look at the... Here it comes. And it just it really adds the balance. The well, not the balance. It's just it's just a good little trick. Do you know what I mean? Um, right. And especially during the breakdown, I wouldn't do this during the rest of the song because there's just it would um, eat too much headroom up. But you know, I got you pretty much got infinite headroom in the breakdown because you know everything's quieter as a whole. So, um, you know, and listen to this with the hyperblast drum loop, and you've got this like banging sound I'm talking like awesome right I think that is 
the percussion, the little breakbeat sections, breakbeat samples. Um, I'll just show you what this is while we're here. Um, before I forget, this is just an audio recording. It just it's basically just a nice like delayed out, probably like um, snare or something, and it's meant to hit at the same time as certain things that are going on this thing so you get like a very subtle very subtle only adds in a you know the tiniest of thing that will just like you know it's just there's a lot of that in this track unneeded probably but it's there so what's this yeah that's just like something to add into like Try and just fill in a bit more sound there. Right, so the synths. This is going to take forever. Fucking hell. There's so many. The Reese. We'll, we'll go through that first, right? There's a lot of layers in this Reese. Let's begin. So, at the, let's go from the first chop. We get this just... Which is basically just a saw and a square wave to get that, like fat sound nothing really going on no legato really I mean we got a legato with no portamento and it just goes just hard maybe and then just ozone 10 maximizing it a bit making it an absolute slug of a wave tone three types of distortion simple this one we just got the sub I think yeah high sub so it's not really a sub but it just help push what notes are going on. It just it just helps like direct things, especially when things get a bit muddy. Having just a sine wave popping out can kind of like, oh yeah, that's that's kind of what's going on here. So then we got this. So here, there's a lot, a lot more like, um, like, how do I describe it? This is a unison. So the original is a unison-based Reese, right? So uh, very wide, right? But this one is a detuned, like fine detuned wave and it looks like a weird wave but all that is is like I've removed the fundamental note from the um, saw so what we have here is a like a completely mono um, Reese there's no like stereo to this it's just like a weird sounding thing but you add it together and you get this good like you know sorry if you add them all it sounds you know Sounds great. So we're missing the next one. That's doing nothing. And then this one. Just. Bit of a, a texture on here. Um, which is obviously adding into the other ones. And we'll add that in now and have a listen to that. What does this sound like? Just hear it in the back. Just here in the back, and that's like a bit of the like euphoric sound going on that one. And this it's just triangle wave, is it? Yeah, kind of. What is that? Yeah. It's just another saw wave with the removed um Yeah, it's a saw wave with the removed fundamental plus a kind of a it's not really a triangle, but it's like a rounded sine wave. Probably only active in certain areas so this one turns on and off during the majority of the song but comes in on the drop to add a bit more power so we you listen to all this yeah just there to add a bit more power but come in when everything adds in and all the synths it's like let's take it away because we don't need that extra thing it's getting a bit muddy and then and exactly the same down when we have the drop. It just adds in and then it is in for the rest of the song then. Okay, interesting. 
you know, certain things I would probably change if I was going to remake this song again. Right, so we've done the Reese. Amazing. Moving on to the next thing. We've got this thing. Just an alarm noise. I can't remember how I made this. It's probably resampled off a fair few things. Um, probably an alarm noise that I've just like taken out and then just done this and then just edited to hell. You know, is it pitched? Nope. It's fine. Right. So it's just got delay, reverb, compressor, standard as a sidechain. No, it's just not even not in use. Um, a thin EQ to kind of band it together. So. And then as it grows, where is it? Get to this. Awesome. That looks like a saw wave with just a lot of noise. Right. And then an echo boy just to kind of add a bit of like delay going about, you know? Simple, but sounds really cool. Right, and then we just have a riser here. Which is just a pitched up version of this uh, synth playing a, like, reverb tail, basically. You know, there's a lot of, like, reusing the same sound sets for different things in here. Right, so that's that. that. What is this? Go have a listen. Same thing. It's pretty much the same synth, but um, reverbed. But these aren't in use, so we could delete them. Um... I think it's a bit of advice as well, but like obviously this this project extremely complicated. There's a lot of layers. There's a lot of layers that aren't in use. Like these two are just not in use. But I wouldn't, you know, I'm opening this project like let's say six months after I finished it with um, some of the Tecmo adjustments that we've like added in, and um, I don't want to delete anything because I'm not sure if anything's side chaining off anything, even though like tracks are disabled. That doesn't mean they're not in use, um, and I've yet to find a way to quickly ascertain that. So uh, I just leave things, really. Those two things aren't really adding anything. What I would possibly do is, like, colour them black and then just do that, and then we can ignore them a bit easier, a bit easier on the eyes as well. Right. Here it gets a bit more busy again. Lead. Now, there's a lot in this. this there's, like two groups of different synths which you've got the um the one melody which is this staccato melody which let's unfreeze this this staccato is just a uh, simple it's quite a simple synth i think sorry i have to group these within here what is it multi-group no I'll have to chuck these in here as you can see it's started to break down now because there's just so much going on in this project so we'll just have a quick turn these off for two secs delete these first so we'll have a listen to without this you've just got like a Just a standard pluck, really. What is this? Classic strings, probably preset on here. Um, just two souls, you know? Nice and simple, but we add in a bit of redux, a bit of dirt to that, a bit of distortion. Really, like, scooping out some of the mids from this to make space for other synths, and probably the Reese, mostly, from that area. And then add in a chorus assemble on vibrato, on vibrato, which is just, like, adding a bit of, like, a bit of flow to that um, to the notes to kind of give a bit of a wobble there then it comes into this bus because there was probably more than one layer here originally and it's just adding a saturator some more EQ to cut out some more stuff uh, a bit of a boost to the mids which is fighting against the Reese and then um, some a more compression and what is that punctuate yeah, punctuate just to add a bit of snap to it. So what we'll do, I'm going to try and... I think it'll be faster if I undo to get back into the 
yeah, there we go. Right, so that's the one thing done. This is then in a group with these, right? Which is not in use, so ignore that. There's actually nothing in there. Excellent. Sure, I could have deleted that. This goes then into highs, which has got more... The, this is one telling how complicated this bloody project is, and not in a good way. It's not in like a useful projectness. So you've got a... Um, EQ here which is kind of just you know going into TDR Nova which is side chains from nothing it's just scooping out the 1k I remember this song had a big issue with 1k and it was like a lot going wrong with it there was like so much contention between some of the synths so that's the mids pretty much uh, we've got to Sidechain compresses your sidechain in uh, 47 audio, which is that alarm noise. And then we've got the kick, which is obvious, obvious why that would be sidechained. Right. Working upwards from here, we got the high end, which is all these three. Unfreeze. Let's unfreeze one at a time. So we have this one, which is... just a mystical add-on to the main um, you know the main like motif going on here which is the you can hear it in the background fill in some space you know so we'll keep that frozen this is just a noise layer which you can see is analog you've seen this on my other videos nothing to show there uh, the main lead Which sounds sick. This sounds so cool. Such a cool little like um, thing. Right, so what I've done here is, as you can see, I've added a bit of volume automation to kind of like pull the tail away from these alarms so you can get like a nice like suction action. You could have used a side chain compressor, but this is a bit more control. Sorry, I don't think it's able to play there. Let's see. Here there. Sounding sick. Right, and then on this layer, is that, do I have to go through this? No, not really. So there's just, you know, standard effect here, really. It's not really much going on. And then like a classic strings preset yet again. Um, and then this lead, we'll go and freeze this. We've got like a longer note on this to try and like drag things out. So. There is a little effect. Where is it? Here. Is it on this shifter? Yeah. This is what I'm really proud of for this. Um, I wanted to get this like do 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 like pull in down because that's you can hear it in the track. There's like this pull in to the next feature noise. You know what I mean? So basically what this is doing is that I've got this um, shifter somewhere. Where are you? Here you are. I've got this shifter really pulling down into here, and you get this like. And you, you can hear it, it's kind of like freakishly they're pulling it down, do you know what I mean? And you get the do 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 do. And. Without it. See? It, it sounds like it's actually adding in another note, you know? And here we've got a sidechain compressor against that. We've just got some volume automation there, kind of like making sure that we've got enough space for this thing up here. Got another EQ, EQing out some more 1000, 1K. We got a sidechain compressor, which is the kick sidechain compressor. We got the alarm sidechain compressor. We've got an E hybrid EQ. We got an auto pan to try and like that. There's so much involved in making this sound. I love it. This it sound. We got another like. Um, sidechain compressor coming off the staccato the da, 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 da. there's a lot in this track and then a pro q3 just chopping off so we just got the highs coming through and then we got another eq chopping off even more 
which I sh- probably should have had this on the other side of that, but it's a bit late now. Right. As you can see, complicated, mate. And that, you know, that's just ugh, so many things to do on this track. Right. And then um, we got this alarm noise, which is just a sample of like messing around with things, you know. I think it's all from the same like extremely noise ridden um, saw wave or something. That's pretty much it. But we've got two echoes here, reverb, standard clip, blah, 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 blah. Standard stuff. Nothing really super important here. Bar that we have like got a um, a fine tune here. So it's like a bit lower. It's off by this point, so it's not really needed there. But yeah. And then all of these groups, you've got the staccato, you've got the high thing, you've got this alarm going to this group. This is just a normal compressor um, with RMS on. It's only on a little bit, but it's basically if anything goes above, it, you know, it applies infinite reduction, but only to 7.1% like of the wet signal gets added back in. This then goes into an audio effect rack, which has this like peak filter in parallel to this notch filter, which you get this really weird sounding like, obviously you've got this notch going in and then a peak on top of that, sorry, and they're moving about and you get this nice like weird phase type of sound going on. But um, it's just interesting, you know? Um, You could hear it there. Can you? Do it again. See? You can hear it like go up and down. Really interesting thing, little technique to do there. Then going into tap decapitator. Distort it up, you know? Then we're going into press work, which is a um compressor that you he makes. Great thing. Um, registered to sound kit. Bosh. Uh, back into an echo. I think it's just doing light compression. Yeah, just a little bit. Then we're going, you know, a bit of EQ to really cut everything that's out of the range of the, the Reese. And then we're going into a, a reverb. There's just so many, like, effects, which I could have done a lot less effects, really tidy this up. But back then it was like, a lot of work to get this track done, you know? So there's a lot of, like, mistakes. That The main lesson would be is make a track simpler than this. Um, but also, if you want to make a track as complicated as this, be prepared to, like, just have a really messy project that may just look awful. You know, if I went through this again and, like, spend a couple hours, like, cleaning things up, it would change the sound completely. It may sound neater, it may sound cleaner, but it may not have that, like catharticism that is within the track at the moment this like just complete sound you know right so that's all the leads and they pretty much go into Pro Q3 which is cutting the lows we've got a glue compressor which is only working a little bit probably just to catch some peaks that come through we got a saturator coming on here we got decapitator saturating again probably only a tiny amount Probably, I'm probably at this stage just trying to like heat things up. So that is on quite a bit. That's something I wouldn't do now. I'd probably want the cleaner sound and distort things individually, but um, it's on the project. What can I do? I then coming into a Molotov to probably compress, take off. Yeah, add a bit more like uh, trans in back in. This is what I would change as well. I would change this for a linear phase EQ because I'm... I don't want to affect, I don't want to have any phase cancellation here on the uh, Reese. It's just silly me. Um, then we're going into a Pro LQ2. Just capturing some more peaks. I've got it on one to one, so you can just like keep crushing it until you kind of like hear it. And it's not going to raise the volume. That's the most important thing when using that. Um, Gulf Foss, which is just. 
spectral EQ, good for like mix downs and stuff like that. Uh, going into another mall talk, probably doing yeah, same thing again. Like I said, long project, lots of things going on. Pro three, blah, blah blah blah. It's the same thing. They got another mid side EQ now. There is a technique for this. The reason is basically what I should have done is done that right to the start. Cut the loads, cut the mids out, right? If you cut the mids out and then distort everything, you you will add mids back in because there's like mids down here that will get pulled up while everything else gets like crushed down. In comparison, the mids down here will be like, hey, fucking hell, mid. I'm, uh, I'm not getting affected by that. And you'll, you'll get like something pull through and you get a flatter response. So it can be a good idea to um, cut them again. And you get like a better cut then. Do you know what I mean? Because you're basically like you've distorted everything because you don't want them in the distortion and you want to cut them again. So it's like, you know, sounds good. It sounds good. This one I've decided to turn off, but that was basically just cleaning up the mids at some point. Got some monitoring equipment here, which I don't need at the moment. And then uh, another... Just to prepare this then for, there we go, coming in to the mastering stage. So that is most of the stuff. We get on to Tecmo's additions. They're, they're like the cherries, the icing, the MSG to your Chinese, your succulent Chinese meals. So we got this nice like... Just being EQ'd beautifully in here to try and like really build up. Let's turn her off. Just build and build and add just adds this nice pulling track, you know? If you notice how distorted that sounds, but if we play it back, it doesn't sound nearly as distorted in the mix, because the mix is very hot. You'll notice like Definitely sounds distorted, but doesn't sound doesn't sound that distorted. Do you know what I mean? So like, don't be don't be afraid to distort things. This gorgeous. And like the same, this is distorted a lot, and you can't hear that in the mix. And going in over here again. Awesome. So cinematic, you know, such a powerful addition. And like, you get this, like, Sorry, carried away, listening to the song again. Amazing, mate. I just love that. Love it. It's so thick, you know? So right now we've got just snare rolls and everything, standard stuff. So, you know, and then reverse, reverse snares and reverse hats, reverse crashes just to like suck things in, landing on massive crashes to... You know, but I've cut some signal out here to try and like make it land a bit better because there's a lot going on. You want to make room for everything, you know? So if I added this back in, it, you know, um, so that's pretty much what, what's in the white here. We just got some snare groups and stuff, not really much going on there. And then here we've got just some reverse percussion, is it? Reverse synths. Yeah. I love this noise, this like, it's just a saw wave basically on a pluck, so you can hear it. But you get this nice like... And I've just got, is that a tambourine? Yeah. A tambourine noise. I would remove that now, I don't really like it, to be honest. So we just like... 
didn't need it but it's in the track now do you know what i mean so like the worst part offending for this is like this part here what's it here I don't know, but there's a section of the track right in here, and I'm, I don't really like it, so... It's got an impact noise here, lots of impact, and like, smashes and stuff like that. And you know, just to like, add a bit more like, contextual... Uh, okay, there's really no need for that one, well, it's actually removed. Yeah, so, like, pretty much, guys, I think that's it with this track. Um, it's just so sick, there's certain moments of this track that I really just, l like, truly love. And um, yeah, it's, I'm so proud of this track and not in like a big headed, you know, I'm an amazing producer. Me and Tecmo have created this like masterpiece. Yeah. You know, I'd say I'm a good producer. Tecmo is a great producer. This track though, I think transcends like what's available at the moment to listen to. Um, I haven't heard much techno like this before. Um, it's not for everyone. And, and like, there's certain things I would change now if I was to do it again. Definitely make the project simpler. I would definitely um, probably use less layers for certain things and like use more simplistic um, processes to try and like glue things together. No need to have so many like redundant effects and compressors. But that's something that just happens when you make um, tracks over like long periods of time where, you know, the the original part of this project, to see if it opens the right one. Um, let's see if I can, let's see where it is. There's a lot of projects in here. Dances with Wolves. Let's see if we can find this open file location. You know, Dance, the 10th of August. Like that, two years ago, I started this project, was it? And that may have that may have not been the start of the project, I'm not sure, because it just went on and on and on. So many like little edits and stuff. Um, no, this is definitely made before then because we had a, a rave about just over a year ago where I played this song originally. Um, I think that's that's the first version that's finished from another project that I've moved into here, you know? Yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed, mate. Like, I really do. This is, it's quite obviously long to watch something like this and in reality, like, there's a lot going on. Hard to follow, maybe, but hopefully you've picked up some things of value. Um, like, I've learned a lot from this track, especially because of the length of time I've actually put into it. A lot of... um EQing tricks and stuff like that and there's obviously certain things that I would definitely change if I was to do this track again but like at the same time it's like this track was made at a certain point in my producing career and it's meant to show that like if I was going to do it again it would sound like a totally different track you know probably less elements and then you wouldn't capture the same moment you know you may capture a better moment you may make a worse track overall like you know but like I think one of the things you have to realize as a producer is that um, you can make great tracks. Like you, you, you see this a lot with like beginner producers, right? Um, in your local scene, they'll make shit tracks as always, you know, everyone does at the start Then they make a good track and then they think, Oh, amazing. Like I'm actually a good producer. Like, and then the next tr couple of tracks will make shit tracks. And that's just the way it is. Like not every track can go like linear progression. Do you know what I mean? Like, your second track will probably be a, bit, be a bit better than your first track and your third may be a lot better but that doesn't mean you're going to continue to climb up like this you know so like if you listen to my discography there'll be like certain tracks that jump out in quality and down but as long as you're raising the lower end up you know so that your worst tracks are rising and that's what you got to keep doing and then eventually like after what is it five six years i've been doing this now i'm consistently putting out better tracks you know and like so if you're ever like wondering, oh, my tracks are shit, just hang in there because in reality, like it's going to take time for you to consistently make great tracks. And like, especially if you don't overcomplicate things like I tend to do. Now, I do hope you've enjoyed. If you want to like leave a comment or anything, I would love to know actually what your favorite part of the track is because there's so many different like um, sections of this track that have like different emotions involved. Like, You've got this section, which is, um, no. 
this part now. That that's one of my favorite parts because it just like starts to sell this like motivation side of the track. But also this this section is I think my favorite. The like that just sounds so cool. Um, and then obviously the drop. It's just an absolute release, a proper payoff. Yeah, so I'm gonna probably do other track breakdowns every time I have a new track coming out. I'll release another breakdown and like let's say you know we made that track together on one of the playlists I'll probably add it as the top of the playlist to try and like so people can see it and then like look at the process I've gone through to, to make that track hopefully everyone gets some value out of that learn some things you know um, if you want to support the track I would like go on Beatport and purchase it if you want or like just if you don't want to buy the track and like support that way just go into Spotify listen to it listen to the whole thing and like add it to your favourites or whatever or just like if you like the track if you don't like the track don't bother do anything with it you know um, and if you just like support in that way, you know, follow my Instagram, whatever. Um, it obviously helps a lot with like getting feedback, people messaging me and stuff, and it keeps you motivated to carry on. You know, this career is very uh, slow to start, you know, so like you got to just keep trucking. Like, you know, it's taken me six years to get on techno bunker. You know, I don't make them the most like commercially acceptable techno tracks but if you listen to all my music it's all unique you know i'm standing out and that's starting to get recognized so yeah that's it i think guys and uh, i hope you've enjoyed i hope you've learned stuff more importantly i hope you got some value and uh, yeah just leave a comment about where your section your favorite section is and uh guess we'll see you next time peace